Good evening, everyone. I'm Dr. Sarah Mustafa from Dentist Channel Online. Welcome to today's webinar about space problem solving in fixed prosthodontics. While we are waiting for the participants to join the session, I will introduce you to our company. Dentist Channel Online is a digital dental media company. It is your marketing solution for dental events, product launches, workshops, and courses. We also provide a collection of scientific articles and blogs about different topics in dentistry. We work hard to be your first-hand information on the technological advancements in the dental field. Now it's time to start the session about space problem solving in fixed prosthodontics. If you have any question about this topic, please feel free to ask it in the question and answer box, and we will answer each and every question at the end of the session. I will start by introducing today's session speaker, Dr. Mahmoud Atiya. Dr. Mahmoud Atiya is the founder of Studio Dental Center in Egypt and head of medical team. He started his academic career as an assistant lecturer at MSA University in 2011. He's a master degree holder and PhD researcher at Ain Shams University. Dr. Atiyah participates in many national and international conferences. Since the very beginning of his professional career, he has specialized in aesthetic dentistry with his famous workshop, The Puzzle of Veneers, Minimal Invasive Dentistry, Functional Occlusion, and Recent Innovation in Digital Dentistry. Welcome, Dr. Mahmoud Atiyah. It's our pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, Dr. Sar. It's my pleasure to be here again in uh, uh, Dentist Online channel. Uh, I'm Dr. Mahmoud Atiyah from Egypt. Uh, today, I will talk about the space problem solving in fixed prothodontic. Okay. At the beginning, the interior designer, when he has a project of, of a house, one of them is a large house or a small house. The idea how to make the house look uh, with a good appearance uh, in uh, every situation, even if it's a large house or a small house. This is like in our field in dentistry. We could face a problem with a large uh, mouth, with a small teeth, like spacing, or a small uh, mouth with crowded teeth, which is another uh, obstacle in our dental field. When we look back to the uh, adulthood and the childhood, the kids, when they have a space problem, it's okay with, uh, for them, but when they grown up and the space persists with them, Sometimes it's embarrassing to smile in front of the uh, audience. So our goal is to treat this uh, uh, problem in a prosthetic solution. If we uh, exclude orthodontic treatments, we need to uh, a prosthetic solution for every case in, in uh, the crowded and spacing problem. So what is the etiological factor of a spacing or crowding? It could be hereditary or acquired or functional. Hereditary like a macrognathia or micrognathia, uh, when you have a large mouth with uh, small teeth, you have, will have multiple spacing. Macrodontia uh, or microdontia, uh, high frenum attachment will cause a diastema between teeth. Uh, macroglossia will displace the uh, tooth to make multiple spacing. So before any treatment, I need to know the cause of the spacing or the crowding. The acquired causes could be uh, retained deciduous tooth or congenitally missed tooth or a traumatic uh, 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 missed uh, of the teeth due to trauma or accident or whatever. When you talk about a space problem, it's not only between the tooth, a mesial or distal side, or uh, uh, crowding. We also will deal with the occlusal vertical dimension, 
the space lost could be on the occlusal surface due to attrition or erosion or by habits of the patient like proxism. Uh, uh, when we look back to the uh, treatment planning in such cases, factors to be considered in the comprehensive treatment plan of a spacing include the initial cause of the problem, patient age, which is very, very important uh, for our treatment planning, uh, as we, uh, we need to be more conservative at this age due to I don't want to make any aggressive reduction when the patient is a young age with, uh, and he has a large bulb. Location and the extent of the space, number of the states of existing teeth, periodontal tissue condition. Uh, in the periodontal tissue condition and uh, when we have mobility, so this orthodontic treatment will not be considered as a treatment option for that patient. So we need to focus uh, to, to know the ideal situation and the ideal cause of the uh, spacing or crowding to put the suitable treatment plan in each case. Treatment approach. The first line of the treatment is no treatment. <clears throat> okay. When the patient is satisfied about his uh, look, spacing, or crowded teeth, so don't hash him to make any dental treatment. The second is orthodontic space closure. Okay. And this is the most conservative. Uh, treatment option for any patient has a uh, crowding or spacing. The third, which will concentrate in is the prosthetic rehabilitation. How could we solve the crowded or spaced tooth? With minimal invasive concept in some situation, we will be a little bit aggressive to treat the cases with full mouth, spaced or uh, uh, crowded teeth. Last, we could have multidisciplinary approach. We could uh, have uh, orthodontic treatment and prosthetic treatment to uh, gain the ideal function and aesthetic result. Now, I will focus on the prosthetic solution in the treatment options as a treatment option for a spacing or crowding. In certain cases where the problem cannot be solved with orthodontic treatment alone, such as a space loss following extraction, okay, the, the treatment option here could be implant, uh, fixed supported uh, denture, or fixed, fixed bridges. So this is not indicated for orthodontic treatment. Some restoration and will. Uh, uh, in the uh, case presentation, we'll show it to be more conservative as resin bonded restoration or, or in leg retained bridge to be more conservative in such cases. Sometimes we don't have a bone for implant, so we could, uh, we need to be more, uh, we have more options and conservative uh, alternative for fixed uh, prosthodontic. The space problem could be spacing or could be crowding or malformed teeth as a big shape lateral. On the other hand, in the posterior teeth, when you have a missed tooth, the posterior abutment will tilt in the space of the missed teeth and the anterior abutment will rotate and the opposing teeth will over erupt. So, it is more important to restore the missed tooth uh, uh, as uh, soon as possible to avoid uh, any destruction of the uh, stomatognathic system, occlusion, and proximal caries and bone loss. Here, the question, do all the spaces need orthodontic treatment? Most of them need orthodontic treatment, yes. Uh, because like I said before, it is the most conservative way, but sometimes it's not indicated for all cases. Uh, here, I will focus on the limitation of the fix or uh, our prosthetic solution in uh, treatment of spacing. Do you know 
what is your limitation when you face a, a, a problem such a crowding or a spacing? One of them, let's talk about the crowding. If you have severe crowding and rotation more, more than 25% degree, it is not indicated to make any prosthetic uh, solution in that case. Why? You will, we will be very destructive for uh, dental tissue, occlusion, uh, periodontal condition, tooth structure. So I will lost a very important thing and you will not gain the ideal and satisfaction of the aesthetic uh, outcome. In any treatment, you should focus about three things, the function, aesthetic outcome, and biomechanical factor and prognosis of your restoration. If you will not gain these three uh, categories with each other, don't do any prosthetic uh, approach in such cases. In spacing conditions, if you have multiple spacing more than three millimeters, it's not recommended to make any prosthetic solution, either veneers or crowns, you will in, uh, impinge uh, foot accumulation between tooth and the gingival tissue will be inflamed as long as this restoration is on. The ideal is, uh, is to conjunct with prosthetic solution is orthodontic treatment. We could multidisciplinary approach here uh, when uh, when we use the treatment option as an orthodontic treatment to make the space less to be as a prosthodontist minimal invasive to treat this patient in appropriate way. So now I will focus here in the sign and uh, the steps of the prosthetic treatment in, uh, in spacing or crowding uh, problems. At the beginning, we will start with the wax up. This is the first thing, the analysis, a smile design to know the proportion, the exit proportion of the tooth diameter, okay, that you want to uh, gain. So the ideal thing is to start with a smile design. According to smile design, you will make the wax up. After the wax up, we will make the trial on the patient with the mock-up. And here's the, the important thing, you will test the function and aesthetics. Here's the first thing. In some situation, uh, it is very, very, by the way, a critical situation when you deal with a spacing or crowded teeth. I don't give high expectation to my patient when he needs to readjust or realign his tooth. Either is he have a large space or a small space, especially with a patient with, with multiple spacing. He live a long time without a correction of his teeth and he has a small tooth. And when he suddenly found himself with a large tooth, he will be confused. So the mock-up is a, the first treatment line for you. Sometimes I started with signs of lines and inclination and pressures, which called optical illusions to solve some difficult problems, which we will see later on the presentation. Here's one of my patients, he's a model, came to my dental office and asked me, I want to clothe these spaces doctor and I don't want to make uh, any orthodontic treatment. And by the way, he is not a candidate for orthodontic treatment. I consult my orthodontic treatment first because uh, my first concern is the patient. So uh, the, ortho the, the orthodontist told me, I cannot do anything because if I close this space, he will gain a posterior space. So I could uh, treat him without orthodontic treatment. Uh, I started to make a smile design analysis and I give him the mock-up. And my advice for you, 
leave the mocha bonded for the patient for two weeks to get him used with the new look of the final restoration. Sometimes he will be confused. Oh, my teeth is very big. Uh, I don't use to be to have a, a lar a, such a, a large tooth doctor. I don't like them. I don't blah, 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 blah. So the first line of treatment is the mock-up. If he's satisfied with the mock-up, we will convert this mock-up to the final restoration, as you can see here. This case solved with veneers only. So let's sum up dental photography and wax up, <clears throat> then mock up. And the important thing, what, which gave us from the mock up, is the guided preparations. The mock up will show us the amount of tooth reduction needed to be removed or added to make a good preparation without over preparations or. Uh, uneven preparation or under preparation. When we, when I used to make the mock-up, uh, I used these instruments. I have guided stones, uh, depth cuts, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.7, according to the what technique I will do with the mock-up. Do I want to be subtractive or additive? Let let us see here, I have in that case a diastema of three millimeters and the patient want to close this diastema. When I saw that patient, she uh, and, uh, at the very beginning, she told me I want to close it with uh, composite restorations and she is a dentist and uh, I told her it will be not good for you the the proportion of the teeth will be very big in the expense of the uh, rest of your teeth. So I start to make a, a small diagram for hair like this. The diameter, the width and length of the centers will be more, more, more bigger than laterals and canines. On the other hand, I found this lateral has a root canal treated and this one, an older crown. So I make uh, two veneers for the canines and I replace the crowns. Why I did that? Let's see here the, my analysis. Now we need to close this uh, diastema. So I must remove from the distal surface from the teeth and preserve the mesial one. Sorry, I thought I have a message. Now, when I want to close this diastema, I must remove from the distal surface and preserve the medial surface. Distal and preserve the medial. Why? To make a shift from the distal abutment to the mesial of the central. As shown here, I will begin to make a preparation from the distal surface, from the canine, distal surface of the lateral and central in order to shift the tooth from their point to the, to close the uh, uh, diastema between the two centrals. On the other hand, I did some gingivectomy here and I adjust the dentist point. What is the dentist point? The, the highest point of the gingiva must be adjust to make a good looking for the final restoration. Here, the patient, this is the mock-up and guided preparation. The line demarked here in the teeth uh, tells me I must make the second plane to be more uh, 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 restorable for the uh, restoration later on. I will make an Emax restoration or, or a ceramic restoration, lithium disilicate. So I need a bulk for restoration. These black indications uh, must be removed to make a, a second plane for the tooth to have a good uh, mask for the color and have a good uh, aesthetic outcome for the final restorations. After removing the Here's the final preparations, and here is the 
final mock-up after cementation of the mock-up. I will leave the mock-up for a couple of weeks before I will uh, make the final uh, ceramic crowns later on. Optical illusion. Sometimes I will, I, I will go for optical illusion to treat some of my patients. Why? Because not only case is a straightforward case. Uh, I need to make some dental magic to make the tooth appear sometimes narrower or longer, or on the other hand, in a different situations to, to, to be, uh, let's see, to be what? Let's say. Here is what is the science of line and if you want someone to, to show him uh, to be a taller or a smaller, okay? When you have a horizontal line, it means this person or this shirt or this tooth will be wide. When you make a vertical lines, it will be tall. Another thing, this is in the lab work, line angles. The line angles, when it's, it is away from each other or a white, the tooth will appear wider. And when it's be close to each other, it will uh, appear as uh, smaller, okay? Some, some, <clears throat> something in the uh, manufacture of ceramic called textures. When I make horizontal textures, the teeth will appear wider. Vertical texture would be taller. So it is very important to uh, communicate with the lab in order to make the ideal restoration for these cases. Let's say some basic rule to solve this problem either in the lab when he manufactured the crowns or veneers for you. <clears throat> we, <clears throat> we said before about the lines, uh, either if it is uh, a line angles or horizontal or vertical texture for the ceramic to be uh, smaller or taller or wider. Uh, the temperature is very important. Another uh, thing, if you look in the incisal embrasure here, when it is rounded and white, the patient appear younger, okay? And the tooth appear smaller. If I close them, look carefully in this diagram, I will close it. Can you see it? When you close it again, it will be larger, okay? Wider. And it, this, this one uh, indicate for uh, as a patient with aging uh, or uh, old age, they has attrition, so the, the tooth will be flat. Uh, and the young one will be rounded like that. So sometimes I uh, decide to make the tooth rounded or sharp in order to give the patient the young appearance or old appearance, according to the spaces that I have. Okay, axial inclinations, it is very important. Uh, think, if you have a wide diastema, I should make an axial inclination for the tooth toward the midline for the medial surface as shown here. The normal inclination like that, can you see them? I hope you see it. This is a normal inclination. If, we, if you have a normal alignment of the tooth, you have, when you have a large diastema, I will go for axial inclination for the tooth to close this space without uh, uh, making the tooth bigger or wider than the original one, okay? If you have a small arch or crowding, I will reverse the axial inclination rather than to be in the middle looking to the middle, mid, midline, it will be reversed to, to be slightly distal here in like a butterfly crown. 
optical properties of ceramic is a very important uh, thing. Uh, any question? I have uh, one ask me something. Good evening. Dr. Komar, Komari, uh, I will wait for your uh, question. Okay. Now, optical properties for ceramic. It's very important when, when you take the shade for the patient, the patient should have a healthy gingiva. This study will show you the Emacs of A1 color with different background. The same A1 color with different background of pink uh, or reddish or what uh, or, or, or grayish gingiva will affect your selection in the final restoration. So before any treatment or before any uh, shade matching, you must make uh, a good road planning and scanning for the patient to have a healthy gingiva to, to take a good color for the final restoration. If you took a color with a reddish restoration and then you started to make your or a, a periodontal treatment for the patient, your crown later on will be, the value will be higher than the original one. Why? Because your eye take the, this shade before the gum treatment. Here's what I'm calling a surface texturing for the ceramic. The ceramic, when you, when you, when you have a ceramic crown from your, from your lab, uh, please don't take it like this one. Why? It will reflect all the light when it's very smooth. It will reflect all the light. It will, ref it will reflect all the light and the crown will be uh, uh, with a high value and brighter than all the rest of your uh, natural teeth. So I must have a texture. This texture will reflect the light as our natural tooth. So it will appear more natural. Uh, let's start with the fun part here. Let's go for the... Uh, uh, my jaw and fun in the clinic, the clinical situations. How could we solve this problem? In that case, uh, this young lady came to my dental office and tell me, told me, doctor, uh, my wedding is tomorrow. Please, I don't like my uh, right lateral incisor. Uh, okay, she, has, uh, she, she had her wedding the next day and I don't have any time. So I started here analysis. I, I spot that this lateral is smaller than that one. Uh, this lateral also uh, is backward or retrusion to the uh, lingual version position, not like la the left lateral. So I start to make a gingivectomy and I decide to make a, a direct composite restoration like here, this is a laser gingivectomy uh, and direct composite restoration with some uh, optical illusion like uh, uh, I, I, I did a um, horizontal line like this lateral and uh, white patches like to, to be more natural like the left lateral. I give her what she wants. Uh, in the same day before her wedding. This is before and this is after. Something also I want to spot in the function, not only the aesthetics. These canine, as you shown here, have a pointed tip. I did some enameloplasty in order not to break the final composite restoration. Okay, the other case, as you show here, shown here, the patient uh, told me, doctor, I don't like my big shape lateral. I want to fix them. Okay, uh, I start to think, 
and I think again, 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 how could we solve this problem? Uh, is it logic to make a preparation for the distal surface for this central and meso surface for the canine to make the lateral wide like the left one? It is not uh, conservative. And even I, if I did that, I will lose the proportion between the two centers and canine. Am I right? Okay. So let's see the analysis before. I have here 3.5 millimeter wide of the right lateral and 5.5 millimeter for the left lateral. And all of them in this, uh, both of them in the same length. So I decide to make an optical illusion in that case. How could we solve this? A minimal invasive preparation for the laminate, as, as you show here. Can you see it? This is the original tooth, and this is after preparation. All the preparation done in the enamel, and I started to make an optical illusion in my restoration, like here. What I did in that case, I made the line angles very wide and uh, buckle versions. I make them slightly, slightly over contoured, not over contoured in order not to make an inf uh, gender inflammation, slightly from the line angles over contoured. Let's see in the frontal view before and after. If I showed you this picture before I started any treatment, you will not, we will not, not sway the, the tooth, okay? What else I did here? If you notice in that tooth, I make the value less dark, less uh, value than, than the other arch. Why? This is light property effect. When I make my hand, this hand in front of you, and this one in the back, which is brighter? This one, right? Yes. Why? Because the light perception will come here first before he reach the other hand. So I know that I make this lateral slightly over contoured, so the light source will come in this lateral first. So I, I must make it slightly darker than the rest of the tooth. Yes? So I have two optical property or two optical illusion here. One of them light property and the other one I played with the line angles. Here is a simple case, it's not a problem. Uh, this a root canal treated uh, of right central incisor. Uh, I started uh, to make a single crown. So uh, I'm sorry, uh, I guess it's not here. Let's continue. Uh, one of my colleagues had a lateral congenitally missed canine, then premolar. And he told me, please, doctor, I want to fix my smile. I am a dentist and I want to make my smile is a good looking. So I decided to make some analysis. I told him I will uh, just, I will remove this old composite. I will adjust that lateral and I will make this premolar to appear like a canine. I don't want to touch any other tooth to be more conservative. Let's see, this is the first, I started to make a gingivectomy. And I wait after this gingivectomy uh, for uh, three weeks before I cemented the final restoration, Emax restoration, laterals and canine, as you see in this final photos. And I removed the old composite and I did a, a new composite for the my colleagues and he's happy with his smile. He's happy I'm not making a full uh, holiday smile just two teeth, and he had a good looking appearance later on. 
one of my patients has anterior open bite. Um, he told me, please doctor, I want to fix my open bite. I want to make a full uh, uh, hollowed smile. And I said, I'm not agree with you. Uh, you must think like a doctor, okay? Don't think like a commercial, uh, you are a commercial one just for money. You should uh, think like a doctor. And every case I faced, I think that uh, this situation in my mouth, I should solve it with the most conservative way. Let's see here. What is the problem? In this patient, he had old composite crystallization in this lateral and the other lateral, as you see here. This canine, the axial inclination is not like the original, the, 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 the left canine. The axial inclination of the two laterals is not identical, but in the two centrals is okay, the axial inclination. So what is the problem here? My problem is in the two laterals and canine only. So I decide to make these teeth only to make a good restorations and to save the patient tooth. He might make later on orthodontic treatment. So I am conservative. I don't uh, do any reduction as he wants, but I saved his, his tooth in order to make later on orthodontic treatment. I make a veneer preparation for the canine. I did a veneer preparation for the lateral and the left lateral. And here is the final restoration. Yes, he was satisfied. I was more satisfying than the patient because I preserve all these. I didn't want to make a 20 tooth reduction in order to make the patient satisfaction or as a high expectation for the patient. I need to preserve his tooth and teeth for later on. He's a young patient, he's 28 years old. Here's before and here, this is after. If you notice, there is a little different, but it is, to me, it's a good, because I saved his tooth, I didn't make any reduction, as I said before, for the centrals or the rest of his uh, tooth. Mm. Maybe later on when he came back to me, I will make an orthodontic treatment for him to adjust the bike later on. Another patient with a diastema with old composite restoration, I started to make the first uh, scaling, root planning, periodontal treatment first. I removed the uh, old composite restorations and she was a model. I want a holiday smile. So I told her, I will give you the holiday smile without making 20 teeth. I will just adjust your tooth to be in a good looking. Uh, we could make a pleaching for the lower teeth without any tooth preparations. Here, the, as you can see here, old composites. I did preparation for the four anterior teeth. And I gave her the Emax veneers, and she took her whole holy smile without any reduction for the rest of her teeth in the upper and lower arch. Another patient came to my dental office, and also she she told me I need a holy smile. Why holy smile? Let me give you an Egyptian smile, okay? Here is the patient, old composite. Let's say the analysis here. Axial inclination is not properly. 
I have a problem in the four anterior teeth, then it's point not equal in each other. The old composite incisal impressures is not equal. I have a large incisal impressure in the canine area. Here, a little crowding of the tooth. So mock-up, guided preparations. I removed the old composite here. I only did the four anterior teeth. And I started to make some measurement. This abutment or this right central incisor is wider than the left one. So my optical illusion here was to make the line angle of the left one bigger than the right one. The Dennis point, I want to adjust the Dennis point according to the uh, gingival height. And there is a very important thing. When you make your tooth preparation, you should make the finish line following the Dennis point, which is the highest point in the gingival area. In order to make the uh, veneers or crown in the proper axial inclination. If you don't do that and you make it a flat, the crown will look like to be a vertical one or a straight one. Don't blame the technician here because he will not able to make the, uh, the inclination because you, of your uh, crown. Excuse me. Here is the final Emax restoration. I only did a composite restoration for the canine to adjust the incisor and pressure between the laterals here and canines here. Can you see that? Then it's point, axial inclination, incisor and pressures, uh, the, the signs of lines, as I said before, this one, I, I did it more wider than this one to make properly uh, a, in a harmony and proportion to each other. This is before and after, and here's the patient after six years of following up. Okay. Let's see here. <clears throat> the patient accidentally lost his uh, central incisor. He's a young patient. And uh, as you can see here, he had this centrals, very tall, and I don't have a sufficient space for the central in the lingual surface. If I decide to make an implant, I don't have a much space for the implant abutment here to make a final restoration. And the patient is not willing to have an implant. This is the, the second thing. Uh, and he refused the implant uh, solution. So I cannot make here a three unit bridge because if I will make a full coverage reduction, I will not have a much a space for the restoration in the palatal surface because as you can see, it's very, very deep bite. Okay, what I will do in this case, I did a mock-up. And according to the mock-up, I started to think to make what so-called a laminate retained restoration. What is the laminate retained restorations? It is a bonded, like a resin bonded, but in the liber surface, not in the palatal surface. And a veneer and a mini veneer for the, for the canine without reduction. Okay, let's see what it is. This is the laminate preparations. Here is my restoration. I did a laminate preparation for the central and the lateral. And the left lateral, I made a single veneer. For the both of uh, two canines, I did a mini veneer, philosophic veneer, without any preparations. Let's see here. 
this is the canine without any preparation. When I make, they try in for the, uh, the feldespathic veneer. And here's the final when I uh, bonded the restoration. If you can see here, it is a, what we say a biomimetic restoration. It is uh, good looking. And he is uh, three years uh, follow up after this situation. I started to treat that patient in this way. Why? Because I don't have sufficient space because he's a deep bite. I did a laminate retained restorations and a many veneer without reduction. So I am very conservative in that way. I didn't lose much tooth structure. I didn't make any preparation for the uh, canine, as you can see here. When the fetispathic veneer, when it's bonded to the tooth structure, it will take the color or the substrate because it is a very translucent and uh, it will take a, 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 what we call a chameleon effect. I bonded it with the uh, resin cement of the same color of the tooth. So you will not found any line of demarcation. Even after the bonding of the mini veneers, I started to make a finishing with finishing ceramic rubber cups to have a blending margins without any line of demarcation. Another patient have an old uh, zirconia bridge. Let's see here, what is the problem? He has open margins and uh, old root canal treated for the laterals, old single crown for the canine, and he is not like his smile. He came to my office and uh, asked me to replace his old zirconia bridge to make a new one. As you can see, here's our, my problem here. Uh, I started to make my analysis and I removed the old zirconia bridge. What I make, I just removed the old uh, 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 amalgam restoration. I, I did veneers here. Uh, and this technique is called a veneer lay. Veneer lay, it's like a veneer attached with inlay ceramic in the cavity of the premolars. It's called a veneer lay to be conservative and not to make a full coverage crown for the premolars. Here are the preparations. And he is, here is the final restoration for the patient with the pink porcelain to make a, a, an optical illusion. Something I want to show you in that case, I forgot to mention, he has a loss of bone in that area. By the way, he's a dentist and he is refused any bone augmentation and he refused any implant in that area. Uh, so I started to make this restoration in order to adjust the uh, bone. I, I, uh, I did the uh, pink porcelain in the restoration to have a lip support like shown here. Can you see here? This is the original bone of the right side, and this is the pink portion of the left side in order to support the lost bone and tissue in the uh, left area. Here, the patient. Can you spot the difference here? The difference not only in the restoration, it's also in the lip line. Can you see the shift here, the shift in the midline and the defect of the bone? How could we treat it in that case? This is a very critical case with a, uh, a lot of optical illusion and a lot of efforts. Uh, this young lady came from Morocco and she asked me to fix her teeth. Uh, unfortunately, these patients suffer from uh, a wrong uh, dental treatment uh, of previous uh, doctors, um, as shown here. The, the doctor 
removed accidentally. I don't know. He, she, the patient tells me that he removed her lateral, and I, I wondered why he removed her, your lateral. And she has severe malocclusion and, and, and spacing and the crowding. It's mixed, mixed of very uh, difficult situations. Let's see. I have root, uh, I have bone resorption and root exposure here. I have a missed lateral here, missed uh, uh, six. Let's see. As you can see, multiple missing of the tooth. Here, the panoramic x ray. She have uh, remaining roots. I have bone resorption. Uh, I have here uh, a pathological uh, issue. Uh, uh, missing uh, lower six tilted, uh, mesial tilted of the lower seven, uh, very deep pockets. So it's very huge, very, very difficult case. I started with a control phase. We started uh, uh, with a periodontist. He started to make a periodontal treatment. Uh, the endodontist did the root canal treated for the defective restorations. So uh, I started to analyze that case. What are the challenges in this case? Uh, Ethatically, a space problem, shape and position of the tooth, functionally malalignment of the tooth and the anterior overjet, uh, biologically generalized periodontitis, hypersensitivity and unfavorable crown root ratio. Uh, all of that is a very serious uh, problem in that patient. What is our treatment plan in that situation? The, the patient came from Morocco and she wants a fast solution. She, by the way, the orthodontic treatment in that case, as I said before, it's not indicated anymore due to the huge bone resorption in that case. The aim of the treatment was to restore biological function and aesthetic aspect with most possible conservative non-surgical approach. So the treatment objective, I need to align the teeth, improve periodontal health, reduce anterior overjet, facilitate future restoration, improve facial profile, establish good interdigitation in the occlusion. So here is uh, the scan of the upper and lower arch. Can you see here the overjet? Why there is a bone resorption here? She had a traumatic occlusion. The lower teeth hits on the upper teeth uh, with a bite force exceeding the normal bite force of the anterior teeth. So it started to protrude here. So I must to make the lower teeth in the good inclination to have a good overjet in order to decrease the force of the upper teeth. Can you see the crown root heel ratio? It is very huge. It's about seven to eight millimeters loss of the bone from the uh, contact point to the interceptor bone. And the original uh, bone from the contact point to the interceptor bone should be five millimeters. Here is around eight to nine millimeters. Uh, honestly, in that case, uh, uh, I, I thought to extract the centrals and make a bridge. But what makes me to change my mind that the two centrals has a stability. There is no grade mobility, even no grade one mobility in that tooth. So I decided to leave them in position and to make my wax up. Let's see what we will do in that case. In this case, do we have a restorative space? This is the first question. Okay. Do we need to change occlusal vertical dimension? In that case, I don't think so. No. Uh, the patient adapted occlusion is okay, but the overjet here is not okay. This exceeding the force of the anterior bite force. So I started 
the analysis. This is the uh, manual waxing. I started to divide the tooth proportion, width and height. Look, I need to make a very, very, very aggressive preparation for the two centrals to make them go backward in order to enhance the aesthetic and function outcome. I took the phase four records and I transferred this record to the virtual uh, articulator. I will talk about the digital in the next seminar. Uh, space management on optical illusions. Uh, from six to seven years ago, uh, how to uh, solve this problem? I, I get an idea from six or to seven years ago. Uh, one of my patients came to my dental office with a, a, a gemination. He has, he had a, a, instead of six anterior teeth, he had eight anterior tooth. So I started to, con to, to convert the eight tooth to six teeth. How? Like this. But in this case, it inspired me in the case of my uh, uh, Moroccan uh, uh, patients. How? I took this geminated tooth and I decided to make an optical illusion in my patient with uh, a restoration type. Let's see how could we do this. First of all, I make a guided preparation with the mock-up guided protocol, as we said before. This is my preparation. The lower will have a veneer preparation and the upper will have full coverage restoration. Yes, I know that I'm, I, I'm very uh, destructive in this situation. It's not my type of preparation, I know, but this is the only situation to save the tooth and function and the occlusion of that patient. And I'm following what I'm called, I'm following the guided preparation. This is a butterfly crown. I created this idea to make an optical illusion. How could we do this? I did, I, if, you, if you remember, this patient doesn't have, uh, or didn't have a lateral incisor. So I make the canine, I divided the canine to make the distal surface as a canine and the mesial surface as a lateral incisor. Let's see here. On the other hand, I did a splinted crown for the, the two centrals, which has, a uh, very severe bone loss in order to make the center of rotation uh, less and to decrease the resistance arm and to increase the fulcrum arm like this. When you have a bone loss, the center of rotation will migrate to the apical part so the uh, uh, fulcrum arm will be higher than resistant arm. When you make a splinted tooth, you will shift the center of rotation at the middle between the two centers, so you will decrease the force and you increase the fulcrum arm. Okay, this is what I'm uh, that that I was thought about that case. I started to make a root canal. Uh, I started to make aggressive preparation, and I make the two crowns very very deep in the gingiva in order to decrease the. Uh, contact between the two centrals and the interceptor point to be a five millimeters like the normal condition. Here's the, the before and after. Can you see the butterfly crown here? I don't have a lateral incisor as you, as you can sh sh uh, see uh, this area. Could any lateral come at that point? No. So what I'm thinking is to make the butterfly crown in that case. Here the, I did a groove in order to make the line angle, I, I, to facilitate, to rotate the line angle and to make the separation between the connected uh, or geminated or butterfly crown. This is the final preparations in the crown. Here the x-ray after we finished the restoration of the patient, 
uh, I was satisfied about the final result. The patient was very happy. And this is a follow up uh, seven years for up for that patient. This is the final. This is the our patients. So, and by the way, I didn't give much expectation for that patient, and I told her, uh, your centrals, one day it will need an implant. Okay, so I will make that. I will save the tooth as much as I can. Uh, then, if we failed in the treatment, or if we failed I, uh, in the, this approach, it's very simple to remove the two centrals and to make a two implants instead of them. This is why I don't, I didn't make a bridge from the canine to canine in order if I want to make a, a later on uh, implant, I will lose all the anterior restoration. So here is the most conservative way in that situation. And here the, uh, my little butterfly crown. This is my little magic here, a butterfly crown. Here are the happy patients before and after. This is five years follow up and this patient is seven years follow up. She will come for me in the next two months to follow up again. As you can see, we are just the occlusion. We are just the aesthetics, monatics, function. Uh, and here, as we, I, I said before, I, the space problem, not only mesial or distal or spacing between tooth, it's also an occlusive vertical dimension, okay? Can you see that case? He had uh, an accident and he lost his occlusive vertical dimension and he had uh, accounting for the lower jaw. He did uh, multiple surgeries and he came to fix his teeth in my dental clinic. This is a radiographic examination, as you can see here. He had a severe attrition for the anterior teeth. Uh, I need to adjust the occlusal can. I need to, uh, to make a slight bite raising, okay? Uh, I need to adjust the aesthetics and phonetics for the patient. Here is the control phase with the wax up and uh, by tracing, when I do a by tracing, I leave the patient two to three weeks to follow up in order to uh, uh, in order to uh, um, check the occlusion, check the TMJ, uh, if it is adapted or not, or do we need an equilibration in that stage or not? In this case, I started to make a full coverage crown for the old two centrals uh, crowns, veneers for the lateral and centrals, the, the four uh, anterior uh, root canal treated, I did uh, four uh, crowns, the canines uh, veneers, Occlusal veneers for the uh, upper molar and crown and endo crown for the uh, premolar. Here the final restoration. In the left side, <laughs> I have a very narrow space for the, he had uh, a, a missing upper six, but the space is very close. So I decided to make a resin bonded restoration like this one. I didn't make a full coverage reduction. This is my resin bonded restoration. And I added uh, here another five because I don't have a much space for the six. This is the final resin bonded restoration. Veneer, it, is, it was a big case. Here's the patient before and after. This is the occlusion and lateral views. Can you spot the difference? I started slightly to adjust the occlusal canting in the lower teeth. 
adjusting the thinness point and the proportion of the teeth. Here is the patient after six years of following up. Last but not least, let's sum up with this case. It's a very simple case, but, but let's sum up how to treat the case in the appropriate way. The first, we took a photography a, for the analysis. The dental photograph is very essential in that situation. Uh, a little spacing between the two, a little gum disease. As shown here, she want to fix her smile. This is the cast. I like to make a wax up. It was my passion when I was a student in the college. And I give here the first mock up. And I also added a virtual mock up. And I give here the second one. And she decides which mock up she likes the most, and then I started to make the guided preparation after that with a very conservative preparation. This is a laminate preparation for the six anterior teeth only. I took the shape guide. Can you, in this uh, photo is a very critical thing. This is called a dye shade or dentine shade. When you took a shade for the patient, not only you instruct the laboratory to, to take the uh, 3D master or Vita Classic shade guide, when you tell him, I need an A1 shade or one M1 shade. Okay, he doesn't so how, or he didn't see the patient. And if he didn't know the substrate or the dentine shade of the patient, he might be wrong. He might give you a wrong color. Why? Because you didn't give him enough information about the tooth after reduction. As you can see here, this lateral incisor is slightly more darker than the rest of the tooth. So this is the dye shade. I must uh, give the information for the lab that the die shape in the three for the lateral and in the tooth for the rest of the tooth. In order to let the lab to make an equation, how to reach the A1 shape? If you have a dark shape, if he, if he don't have this information, it might, your restoration will be grayish in some uh, tooth. So this is the final shade selection. This is a color co co corrected lamp in order to take the uh, color in the daylight. Here's the mock-up, and here's the uh, final bonding uh, procedure for the veneers. This is the patient, and this is the patient with the A1 shade, uh, which is a natural shade with high translucency, lithium disilicate restoration. Another uh, full mouth rehabilitation case with the attrition and the multiple spacing and effective restorations. We did here, uh, I know I, this is a, a very complicated cases uh, which need more focusing or more presentation about full mouth rehab or occlusion, but uh, I will skip it for now. This is called the leaf gauge. Uh, I use I use this technique to uh, to create a space for the restoration by uh, make a, a by tracing when the condyle in the very precise and ideal condition, uh, ideal position. Uh, this is a full mouth rehabilitation combined with the uh, post and core, a fiber post, customized post, implants. Uh, veneers, crowns, uh, it combined very, very uh, multidisciplinary approach. And here is the final restoration when we adjust the occlusal vertical dimension. And uh, the final thing, it's risk, which is very important thing to adjust the occlusion after the finishing. 
of the any full mouth rehabilitation in order not to make a relapse for the case or uh, you, you will make your rest restoration broken if you have a premature contact or uh, you will have a spacing uh, later on in the teeth if you have exceeding bite force in the different, uh, in any uh, tooth with the high demarcation of the articulating paper. A after tooth uh, adjustment of occlusion, and here's the. This is a small uh, quiz for you, uh, but uh, I don't think it's uh, uh, good for uh, to make it right now. I will send it to you by email, and I hope to see the how to how, how could you solve this problem. This is a normal tooth and I have a many situation and I want you to make adjustment for different aesthetic situations or crowding or spacing or, or what is the, 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 um, what is the problem in this figure or how could you solve uh, this uh, of this figure later on? So I will try to send this to uh, my colleague uh, to share this with the audience and in, uh, I want your feedback about this quiz uh, to be solved. Thank you very much uh, for your presence. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you again and hope to see you later uh, on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Sarah. Uh, Thank you so much, Dr. Mahmoud Atiyah, for this interesting webinar. It was really very informative, very clear. Uh, well explained. It was a very, very uh, good presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Meanwhile, I will ask your permission to introduce our company to all the participants. And I request all the participants to kindly put their questions in the question and answer box if they have any. We will answer each and every question at the end of the session. So, Doctor, can you please stop sharing your screen so I can share mine? Sure. So this is our organization, Dentist Channel Online, Healthy Smiles, Wealthy Lives. About Dentist Channel Online, uh, it's a leading media company that aims to spread awareness and knowledge regarding various aspects of dentistry. We conduct regular webinars and courses on different areas of dentistry. Being a prime member of Dentist Channel Online brings you several opportunities, accredited webinars and dental courses. If you're not a prime member yet, kindly join our family to get free certificate of participation after every event and get special discounts and offers on our workshops and courses. This is an example of the certificate of participation that you will get uh, if you become a prime member at Dentist Channel Online. About our upcoming dental webinars, we have a webinar on Friday, November 26 at 10 p.m. Indian Standard Time with Dr. Azza Schumann about composite restoration and rubber dam isolation. And we have another webinar on Saturday, November 27 at 11.30 a.m. Indian Standard Time with advocate Sushant Samudrala about legal aspects of dental practice part two. You can find part one on our social media platforms, our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. We have also two consecutive sessions, one on Saturday, December 11, with Dr. Callum Pop about 20 mistakes in rubber dam isolation and how to avoid them at 9 p.m. Indian Standard Time, and another session on Sunday, December 12, about Class 5 composite and rubber dam isolation with Dr. Callum Pop, also at 9 p.m. Indian Standard Time. 
about our upcoming workshops, we have an online workshop about basic tutoring technique with Dr. Prashant on November 28th from 9 a.m. until 12 p.m. Indian Standard Time. For latest dental updates, kindly uh, send your full name to this number. You can WhatsApp also this number for more info. Or you can check our website, events.dentistchannel.online. Today's webinar is sponsored by NovaMind. NovaMind offers a full spectrum of implants and prosthetic solutions that accommodate any clinical need in modern implantology. We successfully supply highly demanded dental implants types called internal hex, tissue level, bone level, and active conical connection. Our EU production unit and product quality is appreciated worldwide. Dental implants and dental restorative solutions produced, maintaining all the standards of EU medical device regulatory. Products are manufactured in Athens, Greece, and distributed worldwide with more than 1 million happy restorations. Kindly follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube where you can find our recorded sessions. So now we can... I think... Uh, move on to the question and answer session. Uh, what is the difference between Emacs and DMLS restoration and when are they used? Okay, Simina. I uh, thank you for asking me. Now, the, what is the Emacs for the first? Emacs is the uh, eyeglass ceramic. It is a lithium day silicate ceramic, uh, which is <coughs> could be pressed or milled as a manufacturer. It could be CAT CAM or could be uh, in a conventional way like wax up uh, and, uh, and, uh, and pressing to give you a high a strength ceramic of uh, 350 megapascal and a good aesthetic we have with high translucency. DML, it is the uh, uh, a metal uh, which is uh, covered with porcelain. It's a laser metal, laser centering of metal covered by, por by porcelain. When could we use this or that? Uh, the Emax is uh, a very good uh, restoration. It's a bonded restoration. It is a, yes, it is a very pretty one. It could be, uh, uh, you could use it as a veneers in lays, on lays, single crowns for anterior or posterior teeth. In all situations, you can use it, but you, can, you cannot use the Emax uh, restoration at the three unit bridge in a posterior area. Maximum three unit bridge in the anterior area. Uh, this is the maximum usage of Emax restoration. But if you want, uh, if you want to have a, a more a stronger restoration for the posterior area as a bridge, a long span bridge, you could go for uh, uh, DML restoration. I hope that I answered your question. Uh, sometimes in the large restoration, like uh, implant supported uh, fixed partial denture. Uh, you need to make um, you need uh, uh, a material like uh, a metal material to be stronger to withstand the bending force of the arch. Here is ceramic is not indicated. You could use zirconia, you could use metal, okay, like titanium, laser centering, what so on, uh, in a large. Uh, a span dimension. But in a single crown, you could use uh, lithium disilicate or ceramic or Emax. Emax, by the way, the commercial name of lithium disilicate. Lithium disilicate is the uh, academic name of the, this ceramic. Uh, we have a variety of uh, materials, not only metal ceramic, you have zirconia, you have a hybrid ceramic also, which is combined between the composite and ceramic. With different situation, uh, every case have a different situation and have a different uh, uh, restoration type I could use. Uh, sometimes I use a hybrid ceramic if the patient have 
uh, aware with a small cavity, especially in the premolar area. Emax, in all my cases, in veneers area, anterior area, I use it. A, another restoration called feldspathic porcelain, which has a higher translucency than Emax, but a lower uh, 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 strength. The feldspathic porcelain, 150 megapascal. So I just need it for the anterior veneer restoration. So as a doctor, you decide which restoration you could use in different situations. Thank you so much. Anyone has any question? I don't think so. I think all is fine, all it was clear. All was very clear, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You. So we don't have any other question. I would like to thank you again for this uh, interesting webinar and for sharing your knowledge and experience with us, Dr. Mahmoud. And we are looking forward for more webinars with you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarah. I'm, uh, it was my pleasure. And I'm very happy to be with uh, you and Dentists Online channel. And then uh, we'll see you again. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, dear colleagues for uh, uh, your uh, attendance uh, and I will see you again in the next topic uh, in the future. Thank you so much. The pleasure is ours, dear doctor. So we'll see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you. Bye-bye.